Welcome to Sidetrack, the brand new project for us here on the channel. It's going to go along the lines of the clip of the day that you're used to seeing, and I've enjoyed bringing those to you for the last several years, and I have no intention of stopping. I've got enough material to keep going for probably another four or five years without doing any repeats. And with each one of those clips, I tend to do something where I'll write a paragraph and give you a little bit of a context about the competitor, about their vehicle, about the event, or something in particular that I want you to pay attention to. But once in a while, we run across some things where that short 15 to two minutes clip just isn't enough to really tell the story. And we needed a new avenue to come up with a way to, to try and shed some light on these deeper things. So that's where this comes in. It's a sidetrack deep dive. Before we begin, we need to highlight our fine sponsor, Dirty Hooker Diesel. Dirty Hooker Diesel, your final authority on all things performance and replacement. If you're looking for replacement parts for your Duramax pit truck, whether it's GM, Delco, Allison, Bosch, they're getting shipments daily of parts to keep in stock and keep their inventory flowing. And they're set up just like your GM dealer would be through the same channels without the ridiculous dealership markup. But when it comes to form performance parts, they have a total line of drive lane, drive line suspension and steering components that has been battle tested on trucks rolling out of their own shop with a DHT logo on the side, plus an expert staff on hand to take care of you, whether it's Rich and John back in the service area, Jordan and Fabrication, Evan in the engine room, Tyler in the trans room, Chad, Nikki, and McKenzie in sales and shipping. They're there to take care of everything for you. Go to www.dirtyhookerdiesel.com to shop and at checkout in the comment section, please let them know that Sidetrack sent you. Now, let's get to our story. Sometimes in the sport of truck and tractor pulling, an event will take place where I don't think we're always really in tune with what's about to happen or what is taking place in the time that it happened. It's only after the fact that we really understand what we just saw. And one of those events was in the June, would have been in June of 2004, in Emily City, Michigan on a Friday night, first of a double header, and it was the super stock class in which it happened. This was a night where we would go from the old ag style chassis all the way to what has defined the modern era. At this time, the Roberts team out of Wilmington, Ohio, was really flying high. The team had burst on the scene in the late 1990s with a pair of tractors, K Magnums, Case IHs, the old Mears tractors, Larry's toy, and Robert Ryan's toy. Ag chassis tractors, diesels, gave them an opportunity to learn and progress and understand the, the sport a little bit better. They would move on and buy the last of the Kwiatkowski Wild Things the and rechristen it the big toy they would buy the last slow ride of terry blackhorns the big toy too and then they would go on to add a third alcohol tractor that was the only one that they built new from the ground up and didn't buy into the stable it would be ryan's toy too by 2004 the original ag chassis larry's toy and ryan's toy those were gone and it was only the three that remained but there was one unique thing about ryan's toy that i had forgotten and that was, and I should have known this because I was there to see it, not at Emily City, but earlier in the season at the National Farm Machinery Show in 2004, that tractor did not start its life as an Elke burner. It was not only the only one that they built new, but it was also the only one that from birth was a true component chassis machine. Big Toy and Big Toy 2 had a little bit of ag chassis bits in it because at their time of their creation, Full components really weren't a thing just yet fully within the rule book. So Ryan's Toy 2 came out as a full component chassis, but it was a diesel when it was first out. And when I found this footage and, and happened upon this, I went back and checked and I actually did find it at National Fire Machinery Show on tape as well, running as a smoker. I'd totally forgotten about all of that. So let's take a look at the three Roberts tractors in action in June of 2004. At Emily City, you'll see Larry Roberts in order running Big Toy 2, which is the old slow ride, the Big Toy, which is the last of the wild things, and then Tim Howell in the seat of Ryan's Toy 2. Three charger setups, and uh, this is the first time they've tried an intercooler on them. They're trying intercooling now. He is a proud owner of the Equipment Superstore. 
uh, which they have a store in Georgetown, Ohio, and one in Williamson, Ohio. And he is also the CEO of R&L Carriers, one of our other fine sponsors here tonight. Hard. Let's watch him get the green flag, and he'll put 598 plus cubic inches to the firing hole. Tighten the chain up. He's got the green flag on both ends. Let's see him go. Larry Rowe, the big time, too. different. Outdoors, different thing. They're excited. They're anxious. And they're cleaned out. He's got the green flag. Larry Roberts, the big toy! Totally forgotten about this. I always remembered Ryan's Toy 2s being an alcohol tractor from birth, and those three Alki machines would go on to really uh, run hard and, and dominate through the middle part of the 2000s in the super stock, the open super stock class. But on this particular night, there was one other thing that took place that really bridged a gap, and no one knew at the time what it was going to turn out to be and what it has come to be now through to today this evening in 2004 was the first night for patrice and pierre baudry to bring the crazy canuck with the steiger body and the cummins 903 and hook it to a sled let's take a look at what they did on this friday night good he said i'm really kind of ashamed he said it's not finished i want some more paint i want some more things on it but it needs to get run we need to find out where we're at we're over here in emily city a long ways away from home like i said they're for 35 miles east of montreal canada coming a long ways to try out the new case i math and calculation blood sweat and tear gotta make its first attempt at the sled right here give it a big round of applause Now, maybe that's not, maybe that's why it's not really remembered too well. It didn't really get off the line. And whatever let go, they were not able to bring the tractor back on Saturday night. But this was the very first time that the 903 Cummins was in a super stock tractor and hooked an NTPA well in any competition as a super stock. But it wasn't the only time that a Cummins 903 had spark plugs where the injectors ought to be, alcohol going through the fuel pumps, and turbochargers. We never did quite figure out who the driver of this particular tractor you're going to see is, but we can go back to 1990 in Coshocton, Ohio, and find a modified that definitely had a Cummins 903 in it. Take a look. Okay, 
That was a pretty interesting find to see that uh, tractor make a run. If you know who it was, please let us know. In the meantime, feel free to surf on over to www.sidetrackproductionsinc.com. You'll find updates all the time. The complete list of podcasts, which are also available through Google Podcasts, Apple iTunes, or whatever they're calling it now, TuneIn app, and Spotify. And beyond that, also the merch section is up and running. Got plenty for you. Uh, free shipping as always. And the YouTube page is, uh, it's not sidetracked. It's my first initial last name, C. Posh. Lots of old video there, and I've got plenty more to release to you all the time. Do have two more of these projects coming your way on two new subjects. Um, we'll be shooting those probably within the next week or so and trickling those out to you. Meanwhile, if you have a particular story in history that you think needs to have its uh, uh, day in the sun, so to speak, drop me a note and let me know. I'll be happy to film it for you and put that out there. In the meantime, thank you for joining us here on the first Sidetrack Deep Dive. Till next time.